So good afternoon and good evening everyone depending upon where you are located uh, my name is Dr Shah and I would like to start with this quote uh, which I like uh, from Dr uh, Graham Bell which says before anything else preparation is the key to success and that's what we are going to discuss today um so I want to I want to walk you through the story of one of my patient uh, I I've changed the name um I'm I'm going to call him as Duncan and he's a warrior Duncan So uh, and then I will uh, and we will will walk through his story and then through his story we'll try to answer the questions that uh, a child faces in his day to day life when he is especially in the school um, as well as at home and re- regarding his rescue medications and seizure preparedness um, and so forth. So um, let's begin with this story. So uh, Duncan is our cute little eight-year-old boy who started seizures at the age of two years, uh, and he has brain malformation. He is currently in third grade. He has three three kinds of seizure. One is um, generalized tonic seizures, where he is a stiffening episode that can sometimes happen in cluster, and then this happens uh, once a week. Uh, type 2 seizures is generalized tonic clonic sh- seizures that means he is having shaking episodes which is once a month and uh, mostly this lasts for 2 to 3 minutes but sometimes this can last for 5 minutes and the third kind of seizure that he also has is staring episodes which is absent seizures which can happen few times a month and um, for type 1 and type 2 seizure he requires rescue medication and uh, to note he his seizures can sometimes be provoked by sleep deprivation and flickering lights so what can we do to keep duncan and duncan's family um safe and happy uh especially when he is in school so i like to uh, discuss i i i would i like to divide this in four chunks one is general precautions that applies to uh, everyone uh then the second is safety with exercise sports and water uh special accommodations and then the seizure action plan and i believe it's it's we can get a customized customized uh, seizure action plan from our provider and i think that's that's one of the most important things to do so a general precaution uh if someone has photosensitive epilepsy uh the meaning of photosensitive epilepsy is that f- sometimes a flickering light can cause seizures um, not everyone has that some pe- uh, kids with generalized seizures have high chances of having seizures with the uh, strobe lights so avoid strobe lights if 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 the kid has tendency to uh, having seizure with it second is avoid heights uh, if uh, we recommend them to be at up to 2 feet of on the ground all the times not about that and because that can increase their risk of having uh, injury if they fall down with seizure the third is limit heat exposure and the last time last point is limit screen time because sometimes prolonged sc- uh, screen time can increase someone having risk of if someone has risk of photosensitive seizures they can have increased risk of having seizures um so i'm going to discuss about uh, sports and wa- water safety uh, and these are the guidelines from uh, international league against epilepsy the, the task force came up with this guidelines in 2015 i'm not going to discuss all, all we are just going to discuss something pertinent to today's talk um, and some practical points so in terms of sports uh, we divided into group 1 sports which is uh, which 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 are the activity at very low risk of injury or almost non significant risk of uh, injuries so that includes jogging running baseball basketball dancing golf uh, racket sports such as table tennis and tennis um that everyone can do even the uh, kids with seizures can do um and that doesn't have any contraindication the second type is uh, moderate risk sports which includes archery canoeing boxing karate cycling uh, horse riding ice hockey uh so we what we recommend is that it should be avoided if possible generally we don't avoid if the child is having appropriate gears and a uh, in a po- appropriate protective gears uh, if they are wearing it all the time when they are doing this activity and the third kind of activity is that is a high risk sports activity which includes uh, uh, mostly uh, aviation climbing diving horse racing motor sports um, scuba diving and kids with seizure we generally recommend uh, to avoid this um, when they come to our clinic and this is this is something that we try them not to have unless um, 
it's absolutely like absolutely necessary and in that case we can make some uh, customized recommendations for them uh, and the good news is that um, in this 2015 guidelines the good news is that if this child is seizure free for 12 months they can participate in all the kinds of group 1 group 2 and group 3 sports uh, if they are seizure free for 12 months regarding water, water safety um, as we know a person can drown uh, if they have seizures in water so they can drown in uh, if they have seizure in water and it doesn't take much water to 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 stop having breathing so when they are in water um, make sure that they have proper supervision and make sure that someone is around that around them that knows how to swim and has life saving skills and knows how to respond to seizures um and then in terms of uh showers take showers instead of baths because um if the seat and and the, if the seizures are frequent or if there is tendency to fall down then use a shower chair um and that can that's uh, that's important for uh, water safety uh the third thing is a special accommodation in school uh i'm going to touch on the first two points and our next speaker is going to talk about 504 plans and the individual uh, education plans so for bus safety uh, make sure that the bus driver and the other school personnel or aides are familiar with the seizure action plan released by um, your your epilepsy doctor uh, or your neurologist or your nurse practitioner uh unlicensed individuals are permitted to administer rescue medication uh, as as long as they they know about the seizure action plan and make sure that the rescue medication are there with the patient all the time appropriately labeled and accessible to patient and the people around the child so let's talk about seizure action plan so what is seizure action plan so it is a detailed seizure related information about the student um and so ev- so what we say is that every person with epilepsy may not need rescue therapy but every person will with epilepsy needs a seizure action plan so who uses it uh, every adult individual who interacts with your child on a day to day basis specifically school teachers school nurses coaches and other individuals with supervisory role should receive and review seizure action plan where it is kept uh, typically a school nurse serves as gatekeeper of the seizure action plan and it is advisable for school nurse to have this seizure action plan in students file uh, in the uh, with one with the classroom teacher should also have a copy and again parents and physician should also have a copy of it uh, who will benefit almost everyone uh, the kid and the people around the child will benefit um, with seizure action plan uh, students are more likely to receive an appropriate response uh, school teachers and school nurses have when they have the necessary information to respond and provide the first aid uh, when the seizure has when the child has seizures um where to get it uh, i mean there are a lot of resources that you can get it but i one i recommend is uh, uh, is very wonderful uh, good plan uh, very pic- uh, diagrammatic with pictures on epilepsy alliance website then you that you can get from um and i will walk through i walk you through one of the seizure action plan that um we i generally give to my patients uh, it's all customized so this is uh, this is for our patient duncan warrior uh and then it has triggers so for this kid had triggers uh, for example fever sleep deprivation fla- flashing lights patterns of seizures so this diagram is pretty self explanatory for our kid however if some patient has different kind of seizures then this uh, this seizures then we put it here in uh, patterns of seizures if there are any allergies then we put it here uh, and then we put some notes that when does he require seiz- uh, rescue medication what kind of seizures uh, if he has then he will need the rescue medication then we will point it out in this note section here and then this is the second part of the seizure action plan where what needs to be done one when the child is having seizures so, so this is pretty self explanatory uh, you first thing you need to do is time the seizures keep person safe uh, don't restrict the child keep uh, if he is seizing let him do whatever he is doing uh, stay with the person and keep the record and then this is the second part is provide the rescue treatment where we write exact dose of the medication how to give the medication 
what is the uh, route of administration and uh, and then the last part is call for emergency in in the situation if the seizures are longer seizures if they are unusual seizures um, so on and so forth and then we also give uh, our phone number back and our hospital on call provider uh, emergency uh, call number there as well um so again seizure action plan so after your health after, when you go for your first visit or your second visit any of the visits when you go to see your doctor um, neurologist or your epilepsy doctor make sure that uh, you you have that seizure action plan either signed with signed at the first place and then if you are going for follow up make sure to update it and once you update it make sure to have multiple copies uh, keep one with you all the time in your purse pocket wallet backpack uh, put one in uh, one in the central place at your home uh give few to people who are with the with your child um uh, more frequently uh and then um, you can give it to uh, all, definitely you should give it to your school nurses school teachers um and then uh, um and if your if your child is going to a camp or other programs where he or she may spend a lot of time give a copy uh, to a camp nurse counselor or person in charge uh, and again Uh, during all this process make sure that your child knows that you are doing this and this is a part of this process so he's not left out and he knows exactly what's going on uh when 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 he has a seizure um so what is rescue therapy so we are moving to the next part of our uh, uh, of our talk is about rescue therapy so rescue therapy is the therapy that is used to stop seizures uh either it could be i will discuss in few in, in next few slides about what kind of seizures we use rescue therapy for prevent a seizure emergency for example status epilepticus is a seizure emergency so we use rescue therapy to prevent a seizure emergency and the rescue medication generally don't replace routine medication treatment for seizures um again rescue medications are as needed medication um they are created to be used by non medical people outside the clinic er or hospital and currently we have three fda approved rescue therapies uh, and there are more in development so when do we use rescue medication so the first is that seizure clusters prolonged seizures status epilepticus and the last is high risk times so high risk times are basically if we know uh, a definite trigger for your child for example fever or infection then the provider can work with you and give you a customized seizure action plan to when to use your rescue medications so discussing about cluster seizures so there is no consistent definition of for cluster seizures different uh, people have defined cluster seizures in different ways um, however some of the definition commonly used definitions of cluster seizures are if your child gets more than 3 seizures in either 24 hours Uh, or more than two seizures in six hours that could uh, uh, classify as a cluster seizure. It, ca- it they are also called as acute repetitive seizures, bouts of seizures, or se- serial seizures. And sometimes they can have some warning signs uh, such as prodrome of aura, um, or sometimes they can have symptoms in between the cluster seizures. For example, nausea or vomiting. Um, and then the person returns to baseline between the seizures they may not completely return to baseline but they should return at some uh, some baseline level in between the cluster seizures uh so let's go back go to next uh, type of seizure where we require rescue medication is the status epilepticus so status epilepticus are divided into two types one is the convulsive type so if the child has seizures um more than 5 minutes we call it as uh, status epilepticus and then um, several seizures without time to recover between them so if if seizure comes back to back uh, in more than 5 minutes again it's defined as convulsive status epilepticus uh, it can happen with any kind of seizure uh, and then in some cases particular with particularly with symptomatic epilepsy or in early childhood a child first seizure can be episode of status epilepticus um, and then there is a second type which is known as non convulsive status epilepticus this means that the patient is not shaking visibly not shaking but still having seizures mostly they can have confusion they can be sleepy then they can be staring um and sometimes this can be very hard to recognize uh, and in some cases 
it is possible to diagnose non convulsive status epilepticus with eeg um, and sometimes you can't diagnose it by just looking at the child uh, however if we have a seizure action plan in place uh, the the person who is with the child will be able to know when he is having non convulsive status epilepticus um so why do we need rescue therapy uh, so seizure cluster can sometimes progresses to the long seizures for example status epilepticus and the, and these repeated seizures or status epilepticus or prolonged seizures has very high morbidity because it can cause injury and it can cause because of the brain damage uh, and sometimes it can even cause mortalities uh, high rates of emergency department visits and hospitalization uh, if if we don't uh, stop their seizures and then again the caregivers and the patient have negative quality of life measures if they have to again and again go to the hospital in the emergency room um, so that's why we use rescue therapy uh, so just one slide on who are who all are at risk of having cluster or prolonged seizures so again the patients who are not controlled on two two or more medications uh, which we call it as drug resistant epilepsy they are at high risk of having cluster or prolonged seizures and will require rescue therapy epileptic encephalopathies the patients who develop uh, seizures um, uh, in childhood with brain malformation and other genetic uh, abnormalities uh, multifocal epilepsies if if the child has multiple uh, episode mul seizures coming from uh, different parts of the brain Uh, that increases the risk of uh, having prolonged seizures if they had in meningitis or encephalitis some brain infection when they were uh, when they were child traumatic brain injury can also increase the risk and then um if they develop seizures at very early age that can also increases the risk of having cluster or prolonged seizures and some of the predictable situation or provocation uh is that if they are really sleep deprived if there is a lot of stress going on fever or illness if they have missed um, their medication doses uh catamenial seizures are the seizures which happens around the time of menstruation uh, can sometimes increase the risk of having prolonged seizures and again alcohol and other recreational drug use can also increases the risk um so what are the medication that we use for rescue treatment so the first uh, the currently fda approved therapies are diazepam rectal gel diastat midazolam nasal spray nasilam and the diazepam nasal spray which is uh, which is valtoco um and then the off label medications are bucalmidazolam clonazepam which is uh, uh, oral disintegrating tablet as wafers and then the vns uh, vagal nerve stimulator we'll discuss in detail about the first three on the left um, so ideal drug for rescue medication what should be the ideal uh, property for that medication so first of all they should be safe at their usual therapeutic dose uh, they should be potent in small volumes it should be effective against a majority of seizure types it should be quick easy and safe to administer uh, it should be rapid onset of action within minutes and they should have low monitoring requirement so if you see the table on right just to give you perspective if you give a medication through through mouth it will take around 45 to 60 minutes to start acting on your body if you give it under the skin it will take 45 minutes if you give under the muscles which is intramuscular it takes 30 minutes uh, rectal medications will take around 5 minutes intranasal is even faster less than 5 minutes and then the intravenous is the fastest which is 1 to 3 minutes so that's the reason we don't we can't give intravenous medication because we need a skilled person uh, to do that we need iv access for do, doing that so the best possible next steps next options are intranasal or rectal route that we can use so for so let's say for our patient duncan what should we be choosing for him so he is now 8 years old he is in third grade so we'll let's discuss between giving him either rectal diazepam versus nasal diazepam so diazepam rectal gel is a semi solid preparation it's administered via plastic syringe applicator um, this was approved in 1997 so it has been used since a very long time um, it is uh, we can repeat one more dose in 4 to 12 12 hours if he had another seizure in 4 to 12 hours um if uh, what are the pros what are the advantages so the dose is already predetermined so you don't have to calculate the dose when he is having seizures uh, it has long term track record as it is approved in 1997 uh, 
it is rapidly absorbed in the body uh, can be given in conscious and unconscious patients can be advantageous in patients with post ictal nausea and vomiting uh some of the disadvantages of rectal uh, diazepam gel is that it requires another person to administer uh the delivery route could be difficult in some patients uh if especially if they are large patients if they are on wheelchair and if they are moving a lot during seizures it will be it may be difficult to administer this and then sometimes they have societal implications for example the school teacher the, there are a lot of kids around the in the school in the class and it, the school teacher may find it difficult to because of the the societal implications um um to give if the child is older so so let's discuss about the next option uh, which is diazepam nasal spray so again it's formulated with non ionic surfactant it can be used 6 uh, years and above it can be repeated uh, again one more time in 4 to 12 hours same as our rectal diazepam uh and then uh, the advan it has all the advantages that diazepam rectal uh, gel has and again more and and to add to it um nasal vasculature provide ample and direct access to the blood stream so it's slightly faster and and again absorption is about as fast as intravenous route and it's very easy to use so that's uh, that's the biggest advantage of it um on, and again if the only dis- disadvantage would be it requires a open nasal passage so even if the child has nasal congestion or nasal or some seasonal allergy still we can give it um as soon as, as long as they have open nasal passage um so again just to quickly discuss about rectal diazepam um because that's the that's the one that we use uh, more frequently uh, bec- uh, and it's it's so just uh, going to give you a little bit more uh on rectal more information on rectal diazepam so f- first and foremost thing you need to do is when you get a rectal diazepam from your pharmacy is that to check your dose on the display window um which is um, right here uh the the next thing you need to do is that you make no, need to make sure that there is a green ready band present on your um injection uh store at 25 degree celsius uh, around 15 to 30 degree celsius range or 59 to 86 fahrenheit uh here in louisiana the temperature can go up to 90s and 100s in summer uh so i would uh, i would advise my patients to avoid keeping in the car because if you keep it in the car it can get deactivated uh, again uh, in the colder weather in alaska and some uh, other northern region where it can go to 0 to minus 30 degree fahrenheit Uh, it can again get deactivated so try to avoid keep it keep in the keeping it in the car uh keep one at home and one at school and keep it with you till it expires uh even if it's not used make sure you keep it with you because you never know um uh you you may have to use it uh again this is the dosing for rectal diazepam um generally uh, it's based on their age and weight um how to administer rectal diazepam um so the first is put the person put uh, on the on the side where they can't fall the next is you get the medicine and then they get the syringe and uh after that you push uh, up the up with the thumb and pull to remove the cap the next thing next thing is you lubricate the rectal tip with lubricating jelly and then the turn person on the side facing you and after that uh, you bend upper leg forward to expose the rectum uh, separate the buttocks to expose the rectum and after that gently insert the syringe uh, tip into the rectum and now you uh, i always like this rule of 3 where you always count up to 3 so when you inject the injection count 3 uh, and then slowly count 3 before you remove the injection uh, before you remove the syringe and then you count 3 and hold the buttocks uh, tightly together to prevent the leakage so now let's discuss about valtoco how you will how so it's much easier to administer valtoco compared to so compared to the 12 steps that we discussed for rectal diazepam this only has four steps so step 1 uh, so you remove the blister pack by uh, peeling back the corner tab with arrow uh, and then remove the nasal spray device from the blister pack uh then the next step is that you hold the nasal nasal spray device with your thumb uh 
on the bottom of the plunger and then your first and middle fingers on the either side of the nozzle and do not press the plunger uh, till you are you put the nozzle into the first nostril and again you can use the rule of 3 you put you keep it on for 3 seconds and then press the bottom of the plunger firmly with your thumb to get the valtoco uh, in the nose now valtoco comes in stre- strength of 5 and 10 mg so if someone is someone is older and um, then they may need higher dose in that case you may have to use both the nostrils so 5 mg from uh, one nostril and 10 mg of from the another nostril if you are giving 15 mg if, if if that child needs 15 mg of uh, uh, valtoco um and the next drug is nasilam which is approved for the kids more than 12 years of age is exactly similar uh, to valtoco um and then currently um as you know there is uh, some of you may know that there is a rectal diazepam shortage going on so for the kid especially between 2 and 6 years where you can't use um uh, nasal valtoco we uh, we we need to find out alternative so right now we are recommending using clonazepam vapors um for for kids between 2 and 6 years of age who can't get rectal diazepam due to shortage and these are very easy to use they are wafers they dissolve in saliva very rapidly and um, so the, the so if you are use, if there is a caregiver who is giving this medication you use your dry hands and then you just place the wafer on the on the side between the cheek and teeth and then you press it and it will automatically dissolve uh, uh, the 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 tablet and then it it also acts very fast uh, and the dose is written here um and it's very easy to administer and it's pretty uh, cost effective and then uh, epilepsy alliance of america has nice videos that demonstrate how you can give all the things that we discussed uh, so it's very practical very nicely demonstrated videos if you would like to learn more about it so take home message message is um, that discuss with your healthcare provider about school safety the the things that we discussed in in our previous slides get get your seizure action plan and then make sure to have your rescue medication available 24 into 7 uh, 366 days um, so again equipped with all these arsenals our warrior duncan is ready to fight this battle against epilepsy and seizures um, i hope you found this uh, helpful and uh, i guess we will take questions at the end of our session